Hello and welcome to this brand new series of hours where we're going to cool locations to go and make sure that you understand what our cool friends, where they work and everything else that goes with it. And today, I don't think we can get to a cooler place. I think the location's amazing. We've got a dog bed down here. This doesn't get any better. So please introduce yourself, explain what it is you do, where you're from and everything else, and we'll get straight into the interview. Go for it. Hey guys, I'm Bogdan, founder of here at Apron. And um, yeah, thanks for having us today. We are so excited. And today is a big day, isn't it? It is. Today is Aprim's receipt capture launch to the public. It's been in beta since fab, yeah. back in February. It was in alpha testing for a while before that. And I've had the privilege to be able to play with it since alpha testing and feedback and watch Charlie Khan's feedback on a WhatsApp group, which <laughs> software developers hey. have the patience of a saint. <laughs> I've seen his receipt capture for QuickBooks, so yeah. I feel like I've been using it forever, but obviously users are now got just able to go in and sign up themselves as of today. That's right. So receipt capture, let's be honest, crowded marketplace. Yeah. Some very well-established big players in that space. What made you think, oh, that's a bit of the marketplace I need to get a piece of? Yeah, yeah. Great question. Great question. Um... So our, at some point, our customers started pinging us with emails. Hey guys, like we have a problem here. Like inverse capture, like isn't doing what it's supposed to do, or there were a bunch of other issues. So and at some point, we just uh, we were getting a lot of those emails. So we, we started looking into it, and then it turned out that although capture tools were around for 10, 15 years, uh, they're far from perfect, right? And uh, like this, this whole domain didn't see much innovation in the past 10 years. So we started talking to customers. And we can discuss where it led us, but that was the beginning of Apron Capture. Cool. Oh, I love it. And your timing seemed to coincide with what is now one of your competitors doing a dramatic price rise. Yeah. Did that accelerate things? Did you sense there's now going to be a hole in the market for a more affordable solution? And people might be more interested in doing it now. And did that bring your plans forward a bit? Or were you always looking for this release anyway? Competitors rising prices is not like I would say it's it's a um, implication of a more fundamental problem, which mm -hmm. is people stopped innovating, right? If you don't innovate, how 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 do you grow? You grow yeah. through raising prices. And if you've not got any competition, and you're kind of stalemated with the competition you do have, mm. then you stop innovating because it means spending money and yeah, costing profits down the drain. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so kind of. Pricing rising in the market that gives us nice tailwinds, but we would start doing it anyway because right. the fundamental problem is like there are no good products in. We think there are no good products in this market. Yeah, I mean, the competition they do a good enough job yeah. considering their technology is based on five, ten-year-old technology. Mm -hmm. You guys have got this huge advantage coming in with the latest technology, where you're taking AI from the day that you start with it, whereas your competitors have got to take the AI and try and convince their old technology to run it. And that could be a real huge integration issue for them. Yeah, totally. Manual integration with yeah. most, of the, most of the OG ones, weren't they? There's yeah. actually a person sat there. Yeah, it's good to go. Yeah, totally. Yeah, th this definitely gives us massive advantage. Uh, that's kind of one big thing. Uh, another big thing is we think we're now in this kind of phase of we're past digitizing things. There are, like everything is digitized. There are no paper invoices almost, stuff like that. But we ended up with a bunch of point solutions. One app for receipt capture, one yeah. app for payments, one app for this, for that. And we think we're in this phase of uh, like second wave of um, revolution uh, in the market, which is humanizing things, right? Humanizing experience. And we paid a lot of attention to our product design, keep it super simple, super user-friendly. And uh, trickier is to have enough product designers on the team. It's like when VCs ask us about like, there's build.com in the US, you know, and it's been around for 15 years. Why, why all of a sudden you cracked that in, in Europe? Like my best, my best answer to this question is we have enough product designers on the team. Yeah. Simple as that. And you sit there and listen. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. And I think that's the exciting bit when we first heard about you coming to the, to the forefront with receipt capture, because we both have been raving beforehand of how the payment solution just works. And when it comes to paying bills, I will argue and will argue until the cows come home, that there isn't a more slick process out there, right? No. Like the apron process of let's just make a payment and let's make it work. And that gives us confidence that means that our clients can adopt the technology because it just works, right? Yeah. And the fact that you guys were then going, 
right, well, let's take that the next step. Let's think about an ecosystem. Let's think about extracting the data ourselves. Our first thought was, well, this is going to be really easy for the client to use. And that's the most important thing, right? If you can get the adoption of the of it, well, it doesn't matter how. And yeah. And yours is really strong in terms of it being accurate and everything else. But more than anything else, it's just from day one, it's user friendly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, you're doing something that everyone else is doing. Yeah, you can email it in, you can drag and drop on the web browser, you can use the app, and it's quicker than everyone else. But on top of that, you've gone, how, how would clients like to get this in? Well, our own team would like to WhatsApp us the documents. That's what everyone uses in the UK now for communication is WhatsApp. Yeah. Let's give them that ability. And my clients love that. All of a sudden, we're seeing more documents coming in quicker. Yeah. Like, because it's easy to just go, I'll WhatsApp on, that onto them. I'll WhatsApp that onto them. Like, it's easy. But yeah, so it's not like you've just come in and copied and pasted everyone else's. You've actually come and put a bit of innovation behind it. But what's very clever, I don't know if you've seen this in your firm yet, but we've now got clients that have been dead set against payment solutions, now interested. Ah, interesting. So like, it's great to hear. I've got like this lady who runs a bistro in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Absolute mammoth success and looking to open a second branch and for the last three years one of my team has to ring her around on one day every single month go through these all your open bills that haven't been paid by direct debit or any of them in dispute right these here's a spreadsheet now of what you need to pay and she'll then sit there and pay them all and we've been going on and on and on for ages about you know this would be quicker if you used an app if you use this store, I don't want to use it at all. I don't, I'm quite happy with what I've got. All of a sudden, now we've installed Apron for receipt capture. She's like, oh, this has got payments built into it. Yeah, That's it has. Cool. So actually, we've now got a better value added service to her. We've convinced her because it's in the same ecosystem that she's now using. Whereas beforehand, it was just a flat, no, I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like with SMBs, we uh, often uh, say that Product simplicity is table stakes with SMBs. Like if your if your product is not simple enough, you don't you, you don't stand a chance of kind of getting into their lives, and that's because like you're very much aware of their reality. It's like constant like operational hell, you know, keeping keeping lights up and things. When uh, people join Apron Team for the first time, we uh, ask them to watch the series called The Bear. I don't know if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we looked at it. Yes, yeah. yeah, as an onboarding thing. So that they understand, you know, what's the reality of small business uh, of small business looks like. Yeah. And then, like, if if you have that image uh, of of uh, Carmi, the the main character in, in mind, you know, how on earth Carmi is gonna have, you know, one app for capture, one app for payments, one app for yep. this for that. So there's no way. So keep it simple, bring it all in one, and then like you have a chance at least. So that resonates a lot with what we see too and how we think about it. Love it. Okay, come on, we're in such a cool location here, we need to know the story. Give us the story of where Apron came from and how it's got to where it is today. So Apron started a little over two years ago, back in 2021. I was at Square, before then I was with Revolut, and uh, like all my career, I was involved in uh, building consumer products, uh, consumer payment products. Same story with a lot of Apron employees. People came from Revolut, from Square, from Trade Republic, etc. And then at some point when, when I was at Square, I noticed that business payments are lagging behind. Mm. So if, for example, you're a Monza user or Revolut, you have your P2P payment, it's very yeah. easy to pay one another. For example, we, we had a coffee, I can just, you know, in a couple of clicks, send you money for the coffee. And businesses I found back then also have a P2P, peer-to-peer -peer payment, which is invoice payment, one business paying another business. But that kind of business payment version was a much, much clunkier. So it took like hours and hours uh, business owners to pay their suppliers and I started looking into this problem and it turned out to be this massive like mammoth that just everyone ignores. That was the beginning of Apron, kind of initial spark. And then um, I started speaking to uh, small businesses in London, understanding how it works, why it's that way, and there were no fundamental reasons for it to be that way. So Apron was started with an idea of uh, bringing consumer-grade payment experience to uh, small businesses. And two years forward, so we've uh, focused on accounts payable for reasons we can discuss. Mm -hmm. and today, Apron is all-in-one AP solution, starting from invoice capture all the way through payments, approvals, reconciliation for small businesses in the UK. 
I love it. And what about the name Apron? Where's that coming from? Yeah. Because there's a debate going on and there's two stories. I don't know if, if I should give you the right answer. I don't know if it exists, the right answer. <laughs> yeah, but th there are multiple angles. So if, yeah. if you look at the word apron, so one kind of angle is it stands for accounts, payable, receivable, on. And money in part is coming soon. So stay tuned. And then like another version is, um, which is real too, when we were building our first website and we had photos of the business owners yep. um, on the website. My wife was looking at, uh, at the design and she was like, is it okay that they all wear aprons? And, and the company was called, also was called Hello Cash back then. And we were looking for the new name because Hello Cash was not good for many reasons. And I was like, huh, apron. It's like, that's exactly what we need. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's catchy, it's short, it's easy to spell. It's an A, always good to have an A there into the top of the alphabet. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. And then kind of third angle to it is um, apron is a very ubiquitous tool, simple, ubiquitous. A lot of business owners have it, almost like this timeless tool that everyone um, that, that, that everyone has. So we see apron product, like our product philosophy is similar. We want to build seamless, ubiquitous, simple tool. Keeps things tidy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's another one. Love it. So yeah, many, many reasons for the company to uh, get the name. I love it. And why this location? What, what What's so special about this? Because this office is absolutely amazing. Oh, cool. Thanks, Aaron. Story is we started Revolut here back in the days. Uh, so I, I worked for Revolut between 2017, 2021. So this is where we spent the first two years. And uh, then we, we moved out, but uh, there is a lot of history in this building. So we decided to uh, come here. Love it. Cool. That's it. So one more story. Yeah. Everyone knows what Apron does at events. You get bags of coffee. Yeah. Which keeps my wife exceptionally happy. That's great. I get in from an event, not how was your event? How are you? Did you get the coffee? <laughs> That's all I get asked. But why coffee? Because yeah. I believe there's a story and there's a customer and all sorts behind it, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. So when we went to our first uh, show, it was a context last year. I can't believe it's, it's, it's been one year only, but it's a context it was last so year. so much longer. <laughs> yeah. And then we we're like, okay, what's, what's going to be our thing? One of our first customers was the coffee shop in London, Port and Reed, and they were like they were serving great coffee. And then we thought, all right, let's help them out, and then we'll have a great kind of swag, real story. And we put uh, their coffee in in those apron branded bags, and uh, that was a win-win. And then it resonated with people a lot, so we continued to do. Coffee. Yeah, best swag. Accountants and bookkeepers love coffee. Cool. Even more importantly, they love, they love good coffee. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you came in with Nespresso in a jar with an apron sticker on, you wouldn't have got anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Good quality coffee, you do a fantastic. And my favorite use case for my wife is tiramisu. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So we have apron, apron tiramisu every, after every conference. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the history, where it came from, the foundations of it. We've talked about where you've got to and what's there today, which has just gone public today to everyone to use. What's the vision? What's the plans? What's in the future? Whether it's in a couple of weeks, you've got a few things coming out or the long-term plan. What's the vision you've got for Yeah, Open? a lot of companies face this question. What's our product suite? You can't go to broad because then like your focus disappears and you can't build great products. And then if, if you're too narrow, at some point, like you die because you stopped innovating. And then like our campus navigating this question, uh, has been always to ask ourselves where we can take the customer okay and in, like looking at uh, apron product through the eyes of someone who runs a flower flower shop who runs a i don't know dental practice and then taking customers to to, to the next level so that's how we define our product suite yes. we've launched apron pay last year we've launched apron capture today yeah. and for, for the rest of the year we'll, we'll be doing two things we will uh, continue evolving those two products. We'll be adding functionality, making Apron an end-to-end accounts payable app during this year. But we'll also bring uh, new products. Uh, and early next year, we plan to launch Apron card, an expense card similar nice. to yeah, Plio, Spendask, other players, but designed for small small businesses, yep. not the mid-market. And then also uh, money in, get paid. So early next year, we want Apron to start becoming this one-stop shop all in one business finance app for SMGs in the UK. Fantastic. What a vision. All right. I think this is a fitting area, right? This is where the start of Canary Wharf kind of started and went through. And we kind of, we're looking at the, the evolution of London here, right? So yeah. evolution of Apron itself. I've heard that your next big step into it or your next update is going to be all around 
missing documents, stuff like that. Do you want to give me, give me a workflow and talk to me about it? What, what, what's it about? What, what are you looking to do? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So um, it, all, it all goes back to the beginning of Apron Capture. So yeah. We discussed that Apron Capture has been around for 10, 15 years. It's not a new category by all means. And we started talking to customers and we asked uh, people, what's your pain point with capture tools? And uh, number one pain point that came up was chasing clients for missing documents. Yeah. And then how do you solve it? You make it really easy for customers to submit documents. So you remove all the frictions from that process. And uh, hence you have WhatsApp submission and all those uh, user-friendly flows in Apron for clients to submit documents. But inevitably you'll end up when end of month comes with uh, a bunch of missing documents. And then what happens today is you export a unreconciled transaction report from, from your ledger software, and then you send your client a spreadsheet with dozens of transactions, and then you try to get those transactions in and those documents in. And then this uh, like massive process with multiple emails, people get kind of looped into this email chain. Sounds like my life. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of conversations happening there alongside alongside this missing docs. Like you can discuss, you know, some other things there as well. And we've been through this too, because I'm the one who got chased on the client side, our accountant. And it was painful for you, was it? Totally, totally. Yeah, Friday evening, Sunday evenings, I just had to do it, sit down, push, push myself to kind of go through it. And then we, uh, what we did is automated th that process, and we brought it into Apron, that, that whole workflow. So. Instead of working with a spreadsheet and working with your clients in email, we now pull through and reconcile transactions into Apron. And then you can batch assign those transactions to clients. You can assign those transactions to multiple people on the client side, because sometimes you'll have multiple senders, and then it's good because everyone only will see their, their transactions. And then you batch assign those transactions, clients receive a simple email saying you assigned 10 transactions to them. They log in go one by one, submit documents right in there, or leave comments saying, you know, this was team meeting, or oh, this was a party meeting, whatever. And then you can close books much, much faster and save yourself, save your client a lot of pain and um, time going through this process. Missing document workflow. I love it. And one thing we talk about a lot, isn't it, is ecosystem, right? Yeah. This is building out to be one of the most important ecosystems and accounting app. Like, we're almost getting a Swiss army knife, aren't we? A lot of clients don't even need access to their free agent QuickBooks and Zeros and Sages of the world. What they actually need access to is Apron. Yeah. So the more we can put into Apron, which is still, a, and there's still a barrier of protection between the client and their books, because most clients only get given reporting access because that's all we trust them with yeah. without breaking it. Yeah. So the more we can do that, the better. So yeah, if we can give them that Swiss army knife, but in a protective bubble environment where they don't go in and start messing around with transactions and voiding things and stuff, then yeah, that's all for the better. Yeah. And with your magic source of just, it works. Like the, the, the workflow has just been built from the ground up for the customer. That's the magic source. So whose idea was it to really hone in on this, on this amazing, it just works mentality? Yeah. So I, I guess it's again, going back to that understanding that uh, product simplicity is stable stakes uh, with SMBs. Yeah. Uh, we understood this because before software existed, we were running payment runs manually for a restaurant in London. And we were like simulating the work of our software, just doing this manually. So we were like this restaurant's, I don't know, FD team or whatever we want to call it. Yeah. And then, and then we understood that the realities, you know, we saw all the app stack that this, this guy had. And uh, we understood that we just can't introduce more complexity into this kind of, in, in, into their world. So we understood that we, we either have a damn simple, incredibly friendly product, or we don't have a business essentially. So it's, it's kind of the, it's, it's in the DNA of our business. Fantastic. Love it. Well, use one of these cameras, tell everyone, where can they find you? Where, where's Apron going to be? Are you at any other conferences you're at? Where, where can people find you? What's the best way? Yeah, to totally. So we're coming to Accountex tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, we'll be at ZeroCon as well today's event and then we'll be at all the roadshows icb acca so uh multiple yeah multiple touch points yeah hope to see you all there and the website the website is getapron.com best way for people to contact you if they wanted to try it for themselves is it directly for the website correct yeah so it's completely self-serve you can get a demo but you can also just go to the website open an account and start using it amazing thank you very much and thank you thank you very much